Hello, this is Sean Conley from Epic Games, and today we're going to have a look at the best plugin that not a ton of people know about. Uh, at least when I pull it up on a client call, people are always like, what is that? And they start freaking out, as they should, because it's awesome. Uh, we are going to have a look at uh, something called the Console Variable Editor. If you don't see this, go into the plugins and load up this Console Variable Editor. Uh, plug in right here and then you go ahead and you open it you'll see there's this window that comes up over here it's a pretty simple ui uh, there's a search bill here there's this plus console variable here if you go ahead and hit this button you can start uh, searching for c bars so our uh, let's just let's just say uh, echo here had some noise in her hair we're gonna go look at the skylight sample count so you can load it in here we can change it and then also you can go back to the default here if you want to. So this is great. And then you, you can't go in, you know, say, okay, our limit, but we're going to do something with the reflections. Let's say, um, um, uh, axe bounces, right? I'm going to set that to 10. You can hover over each one of these and it gives the definition, the same thing here, but I can spell, it will give the definition uh, here when you hover over them. This up here will act uh, very much like this down here, right? Then there's the search field here. So, you know, let's say you have a ton of console variables here. You can search for them here. So you just type in Lumen and it will search only for those. There's another uh, way here to search. So let's say you are trying to uh, troubleshoot your hair strands. Right, and you're just like, okay, well, you know, I don't know which C bar I need here. What you can do is you can go in here, go out of this plus it. This workflow is a little confusing, but go out of the plus console variables. Just type it right in here where you search through your stack, and then just hit search all. And what that'll do, you'll see this little search button here, is it'll load in every single hair strands C bar known to mankind and you can go in here and you know you can randomly pepper these things You're like okay well uh, i don't know you know what well, works or what doesn't work and then notice that there's this little star over here if we were to go out of this and we're going to do this in a second you basically by starring these you're going to bring these over into your session right and you can see once you change is it you know there's session versus constructor so if you were to close this now you'll see that those console variables that we changed and that we starred are now you know over here in your list two other great ways that i use this for one is to see like what scalability is doing uh what are we new scalability okay here we go so like if we go into effects and you change this over to high you'll see that all of these c bars that were fired when we changed scalability are now in this console variables list right so there's no more you know, kind of begging and pleading on the forums. You're like, what is happening? Let me change it. So I constantly use this to troubleshoot, right? Like there's some very uh, interesting C bars that get fired when some of these scalability groups get down too low, right? So you can see all of these C bars changing here. Um, if you have a whole bunch of stuff in your list and you don't want them in there, you can just shift select, hit this little garbage can there and it goes away. Uh, another thing that I use this a lot for is to see what Movie Render Queue is doing. So what is this, 290? So if you were to load this up um, and you were to fire off a render, if you watch over here in the console variable, you'll see that now, you know, a, a whole bunch of console variables got loaded up here in the console variable editor. And you can see, you know, what, what MRQ is flipping when you go to render it, it, you know, it could be used for troubleshooting. And then you saw them all, you know, kind of drop back to whatever the value in the editor was when I closed the render. So once you have these, you know, and you have like a list that you like, what you could do is you can go up here to this preset and you can save a preset. So let's go ahead and save a preset. So let's go to uh, Sean preset. Great. So now we just go clear all this stuff out and we can go in here and we can load the Sean preset. You have the option to replace the console variable preset uh, with the console variable preset, 
or to add reset to existing console variables. So if you know you already had some in here, you just want to pile on top, you can do that. We're going to go ahead and add our Sean. And there you go. All that stuff uh, is applied in our level. There's another, and we can just show you this. So there's a few ways, a few ways to load these. Uh, you know, one is to do this manually here in the UI. If you did want to, you know, save these per shot and load them per shot, you can load it, not there, you can load it here in the console variable track, right? So if you right click, go to properties, and you'll see this console variable collection. And then down here, you can add shot preset, and you see on presets loaded there. So these will fire basically when you open up the level sequence. You can also add these in uh, MRQ, right? So if you drop down in console variables, you'll see that there's the console variable preset. You can load these only at render time. And alternatively, you can do it in the graph as well. So let's go graph over here. Console, apply console variable preset. And you can just plug it in here like this. And on preset. So again, you can apply them only at render time. If you want to kind of crank some quality settings up only at render time, but you know, keep your editor fast when you're doing your shot work, you can do it that way. And then there is Probably the thing that I, I don't know if I use it the most, but I definitely like it because one of the challenges of, is, you know, especially when you're working in like a TV show or a cinematic or whatever, you know, anything that has a lot of different levels, a lot of different environments, you know, you need different console variable settings kind of per environment or different characters. And with Unreal Engine, you know, kind of wants to set console variables per project in the I and I's. So this is kind of a great way to get around that. What I end up doing a lot is, uh, let me find a folder here. I end up making uh, blueprints and you can either make a blueprint actor or you can make a utility actor. You know, it kind of depends on what you want to do with it. Um, so I end up making like, you know, one Steve art, you know, either per level or per sequence. Uh, if you drag it in here to your scene, and let's go ahead and open this thing up. And then uh, on construct, we're going to do console variable again, second time. Uh, load preset into console variable editor. So you can go and you can select this and you can uh, add to existing or you can replace existing like I said before. And if you compile this in your world, you see that on construct of this blueprint, it loaded in this console variable preset. So this is a way to store, you know, a, a set of console variable settings with your level now instead of with your project or with a level sequence. So this is super handy. Uh, I end up using this a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So there you go. That was the fastest overview that I could possibly try and do for the console variable editor. It's awesome. Uh, super powerful. Try it out. See if it works well for you.